are you calling these people cold? Uh, some are cold, some are warm. It just um, it just depends. But uh, I'm in Florida. They're warm. <laughs> um, <laughs> all, all year round, they're warm. <laughs> hey, I'm Armando Leduc, producer, film actor, and owner of Leduc Entertainment. I have chosen a life off the beaten path and wanted to find others that are doing the same. Spaghetti on the Wall is a show based on all of the years that I've thrown spaghetti on the wall and nurtured what's stuck. We will share fun stories, ideas, tips, tricks, and more. Welcome to Spaghetti on the Wall. What's up? What's up? What's up? Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Spaghetti on the Wall. Today, we got my boy Will Brooks hey, in I'm the back. house. I'm back. I'm back. He's I'm back. back. I'm back. He's the co-host. Every time we're in Atlanta, he's right. got to be here. And then, of course, Zach Phelps. How's it going? Or Zachary Phelps, whatever we want to. Or Big Z. Big, Big Z. D. Yeah, I didn't even have to say that one, but. <laughs> Tell me about tell me about um, your relationship with um, Michael Phelps, the, the Olympic swimmer. Well, um, we're distant cousins. Um, he's actually married to another one of my uh, second cousins, and um, she lives in Alabama on a, a trailer on about a forty acre cotton farm. That's a part that that's a part that we don't actually talk about. We're, right. I'm actually breaking an NDA right now talking about it. Heard. That wasn't on the subway commercials. I didn't see that. <laughs> it wasn't. Or um, the better help commercials. <laughs> are you I'm, I'm, we're going to be bouncing around. So tell us a little bit about you, what you do, um, and how you know that crazy fellow. Sure. Um, so I uh, I I guess I consider myself a multi hyphenate, which is the term that people use now. Multi hyphenate. Um, yeah. The first time I hear it. Atlanta based um, actor, choreographer, director, um, and then I also work in sales for my daytime job. Um, I met Mr. Brooks over here. We worked on a show. Do you're in town? Ten, what, did we do you're in town before Godspell? I think oh Godspell man, was did first. Godspell too? Was Godspell first? I think Godspell was first. Okay, it wasn't was 10 years ago. It was almost 10 years ago. Because Morgan and I were married already. We, our 10th anniversary was in September. Well, right around that then. Right around, yeah. I think ago. it was like eight. Yeah, I think, yeah. yeah, yeah. and yeah. It, it was like 2013, 2014. Yes. The theater. But uh, yeah, we met doing a show up in um, up in his neck of the woods in Cartersville. And then, um, and then we just kind of worked in the same circles after that. For several um, years. For, for quite a while. Yeah. And then... And then theater kind of died there in uh, in uh, twenty twenty. So we um, yeah, we haven't seen each other in over two years. Yeah, yeah. Like oh wow, pre pandemic. Yeah, I know. I mean, besides yeah. like like messing around with each other on on social media. Yeah, so. heard heard. Yeah, but do yeah. you do any accents? Um, I do. Which accents do you? Um, do? I uh, I know that he for a fact that he does Buffalo Bill for Sounds of the Lambs. Oh gosh, do you? I can. I d- yep. That I can do he Buffalo did, Bill. He did, there's a musical called Silence the Musical, mm-hmm. and Zach was Buffalo Bill. He was amazing he was so good there's a musical called silence it's hilarious yep. it's super funny based on based, based on the, on the uh, yeah. okay yeah. cool and, and it, was I, buffalo bill yeah, yeah and i did awesome. have to tuck and i did have to no you did, did. Yep, i did show my mangina yeah. yeah the whole the whole you did yeah 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 what's yeah. that like um it was scary <laughs> i can imagine it was scary it was uh when you when i would have to like turn around because I would be wearing like a like briefs or a dance belt underneath this kimono, and then I would have to turn around very quickly and drop trow, and then tuck, and then still keep covered, and then I would have to walk down. So I like had to waddle. <laughs> um, and what they don't tell you is uh, it doesn't matter the the uh, size that the Lord has endowed you with. Um, it gets very cold <laughs> on stage, and especially when you're frightened, it gets hard. So I would have to sometimes like shake. A little bit just to get some just to get some distance. Oh um, my god! Yeah, my my uh, my girlfriend came to one of the shows and I didn't tell her that was happening and that wasn't a fun car ride. I'll say, I'll say that, <laughs> dude. So in like so in rehearsal they're like, okay, so this is what's gonna be happening, right? And you're like, okay, so the first time you did it was on stage or yeah, I don't tech think rehearsal, I or? think I did it one tech rehearsal because um, we were running like a really small shoestring budget with it too. And we, I don't think we even got full lighting. And I was like, now I need you to understand that there has to be a light change here. <laughs> cause I'm not just going to stand here just open and just holding it. Right. I was like, cause I'm going to have to, I'm, something's going to pop out. <laughs> so, uh, so we didn't practice the light change until I think like the day before we opened. And that was the first day I did it. Every other day I was just like, and here's where I open. Okay, let's move on. So, um, yeah, first time. And I mean, people were like, Whoa. did like, you practice at home? Um, oddly enough, I practiced <laughs> probably before then. Um, 
Uh, not that I want to, not that I, anything I would want to admit, but you know, you just get curious. You're like, I wonder what it looks. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. So I was like, Oh, people were like, do you know how to tuck? And I was like, I mean, what's tucking? I didn't know what that was. And then, uh, and then one of, uh, one of the guys in the show had, had done like, I guess he had done drag before mm-hmm. and he was like, well, usually we use tape. And I was like, no, 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 I don't, I don't need tape. tape. I'll just, I'll just squeeze. Um, like when you tuck it and then up. Yeah, they like they'll like tape they'll like tape it down for Ooh. when they can get on you know all the all the um, the garb that they wear I guess. Um, but uh, I didn't have that. It was just me and my beer gut, and then um, my my uh, I didn't shave either. I like purposefully was like let's let it, you know, <laughs> let's let it get. Let's go full nineteen. Yeah, let's go full. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So, so you've. Have you ever done full frontal? Well, I mean, that's not really full frontal. Mm, that's you about know, as close as you can get. But that is close as you can get. Have you ever done full frontal? No. I've yeah. never done any kind of nudity on stage ever. I want to do I want to do it. I want to do that. Did Just because it's super Have you ever seen the, super scary. Seen the full Monty? Uh, no. They did that in Atlanta a few years ago. Yeah. You know, several people who were in it. I choreographed that one. The night I went to see it, at the end of the show, mm-hmm. like you're supposed to get the full Monty, right? Like, Five, six guys. Yeah, I think they're yeah. like lined up, and they're they're all like just normal dudes. They're not like Chippendale dancers, right? That's the whole concept. Yeah, of they the all show. look like they all look like Chris Farley and in that Chippendale end, sketch. They, you know, at the very end of the show, you're supposed to you're supposed, they're supposed to finally like pull everything away and show it, and the lights are supposed to go out before you can even see anything. The night I went, those lights were about um, a second and a half late, <laughs> and the whole audience saw everything yep. these guys had. Wow. Yep. And I, those guys had no idea either. Like, they didn't, I don't think they knew. Big old smiles on their faces. Yeah, they were super happy. I'm like, cool, the lights are out. No one can see our twigs and berries, but we all saw Earth. Let me tell you, I <laughs> went to a nudist colony once in California. Really? Yeah, it was really cool. So, here's the story behind it. So, I was dating a girl at the time. Nice. And her friend always got invited to this nudist colony every year by this guy in New York who was a bit like asexual, mm-hmm. right? I think he inv- invented how um, the airplanes talk to like ground control or something, some some sort of technology. So any guy, anyway, the guy was like super rich. Oh, okay. And he would, he would pay for people to come to these nudist colonies um, as, you know, for them promoting, yes, the entire trip, like at the resort, the hotel, the food, the, the whole nine for a week to promote the lifestyle, I guess. And I'm like, this sounds really weird, right? But I'm like, you know, I'm in my 20s. I'm like, let's go. Let's do this, <laughs> right? You know, whatever. Um, and her friend was, like, really nice and, you know, had done it before and, and, and like, brought her family. Like, her mom went. She went. Her boyfriend went. Like, it was, it was a thing. And, uh, and we went. And at the resort, you cannot wear any clothes. Like, you cannot be there if, you know, if you want to be even clothed. wear, like, can you wear socks? Nothing. Well, yeah, yeah, like uh, flip flops, sure, <laughs> but like nothing else, right? And then the people that work there, one sock, were also topless, yeah, but yeah, you could, but then y- they would wear like the bottom half, and man, you would just the first time doing it, right? It's like the hardest part, right? But then once it's done, it was just like nobody cared, super easy, yeah. It was like and. It was such a freeing experience. Hmm. Like we did naked uh, karaoke, played tennis. Like it was, it was pretty cool. When did you do this? I did this in were you 2000. In yeah, yeah, it was in 2007, 2008. How, how long like were you that. there for? A week. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Fe- the 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 Phoenix Sun or something like that. Something Sun in West Mohegan Palm. Sun. No, in West oh, Palm, over no, he, there by <laughs> California. The Phoenix Suns, the entire basketball team <laughs> yes. was there. <laughs> yes. They were yeah. also a part of the a part Absolutely. of the I, You know what? <laughs> I, I recommend it highly. I tell you, I had a switch in my brain as far as being an actor was concerned because that is like, it's huge, right? Yeah. Getting naked is, is such a big thing. And if you can do that, like, I, I I became really irreverent in a lot of ways I after you were that about trip. To say I became really aroused for a yeah, second. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> well, you know, it it it, it happens. Um, <laughs> but you become so irreverent when you can do that mm-hmm. that it like frees you up as an artist. And I was so happy I did that as that as a result of of you know 
of being at that nudist colony, I, I became a better performer as a result. Yeah, I say. So I'm, this guy paid people to come up <laughs> and go to the nudist colony. Yeah, and so here's the thing: <clears throat> so somebody that's the only way he'd get people to attend was if he got paid. Yeah, and so here's the thing: we got uninvited <laughs> because somebody brought marijuana at the time to one of the rooms, and then you know, and I was in the room. And you didn't get paid. No, I got I got paid to go there that first time, and then. Didn't get and then you weren't invited back. Yeah. Oh, didn't get invited back. Because the thing is, like, that part that guy just you know once you once you're in, you get you know you get invited back over and over and over again. So wow, Hmm. I'd have done it. It would, dude. It was not a creepy thing. You know what I mean? Like, it sounds creepy, but like when you get there, it's like okay, dude. There was like kids running around, naked kids, naked kids. It was like Hmm. a thing. It wasn't like a. It was like a lifestyle thing. It wasn't like a. It's not a sexual. uh, It wasn't a sexual thing. Right. It was it, it was. Yeah. Straight up. Like you would think like it wasn't a swinger convention. Yeah. You know what I mean? Which, you yeah. know, this I've, wasn't Woodstock or Ackworth. I, I've been in. Uh, <laughs> I know. Right. I, I was on Bourbon <laughs> Street uh, working at Razoo one year when there was a um, swinger convention going on. Now, that's scary. Dude, it's wild. That is disturbing. <laughs> you you want disturbing? Go to a fucking swingers convention. Man. Yeah. Well, well and they get so they get so <clears throat> sneaky about it, too, at least. Um there, there's a like I said, like up in Woodstock, there's like a Publix right by a, a huge, um, I guess community, if if you will. And I mean, they will poach people. Like they, if they see somebody that they like at a Publix, they'll they'll be like, "Hey, what are you doing?" It's very it it's yeah, it, it is sneaky. <laughs> it could be slimy. And I'll it be like, be "Oh no, I'm just getting invited over." And then next thing you know, it's like it's like you have sex with my wife. And I'm like. Oh. I, that's never happened to me. I'm I'm making up a story. I've had that happen to me. Have you heard of the the pineapple thing? What happened? Yeah, what's where a you, pineapple you, thing? If you put a pineapple on your front porch, it's letting people know that you are a swinger. What? Yeah, yeah. And, and they and so they do it in the stores see, too. Yeah, what do they do in the stores? They like um, you either you set it upside down or you set it on a certain level of your cart to let. Is that why my mom wants the? <laughs> <laughs> it's hilarious. Mom, used to, what are you doing with the pineapple? <laughs> That's disturbing. I used to, I used to about it. Could you imagine that? You're like, you know, you, you find that out, and then all of a sudden for years, your your mom. Yeah, you go you to your know, mom's yeah. house, and you see the pineapple on the front porch, and you're, and like, you're like, what the? Oh, no. <laughs> I, jo- I, joked with, I joked with my mom because, you know, she found out about it. She thought it was the funniest freaking thing she'd ever heard of. And I was like, I was like, mom, knowing you, you would go, you pick the wrong damn fruit. And then you're just walking around looking for people. And I'm like, it's a pineapple, mom. It's not mangoes. <laughs> I was like, you're going to have to have your kids help you try to be a swinger if, you, if that's what you want to do. <laughs> that's that's pretty funny, man. Uh, where – so you, you're from Atlanta? Yeah. And and I see you've got the, the, the Hawks. Yeah, the it's uh, it's all the – it's um, ha- Falcons, Hawks, Braves, and then – And what's the Halo? The, the Halo is the is like the, the, the signature for the brand. The brand's called Fate, P-H-E-I-T. Um, he's like this artist that – that uh, designs these hats and he has them for like a lot of major um, uh, cities. So I know he's got like, there's a lot of LA ones. Mm. I have one of the LA ones, but he did one like when Kobe, when Kobe passed. So they have like a, they have uh, one for them. And then, yeah, but he just does these designs for like all the different teams. um, And they're really hard to find. I found it like, like secondhand on like Reddit. And I was like that. I I want that. And they don't sell the, they now like it's now like a white one, so they don't sell like the blue and the red one anymore. So, oh, that's a good, um, that's a better look, I would think. Than the yeah, white. the cream, the it's like the, you know, cream is what they it's called on the website. And I was just like, yeah, because I was gonna buy one for a buddy of mine, and then I was like, this wouldn't look good on on him. Um, yeah, but uh, but it's a it's a it's a, a black owned brand, so I like um like you know being able to support it. Um, but there's a lot. I'm, I know there's some New Orleans stuff on there too. That's cool. Um, uh, I'll have to check it out. What's the guy's name? Um, I don't know the artist's name. I just know it's Fate P H E I T. Got it. Um, and then the S B S D is like his tagline, which is so beautiful, so damned. I mean, it, it sounds really corny it's when I say deep. it out loud. Oh, yeah, it's deep. but uh, but it's a good, he's a good artist. He's got a lot of good stuff. So <coughs> that's um, cool. So yeah. So from here. So you're a sales guy. Yeah. How yep. long you been doing sales? Um, I've been doing it. Um, not too long. I've been. Um, I would say probably. F- four ish years in different capacities. Um, I like the, uh, I like where I'm at now. Um, it's for a company called service Titan. We're a um, field management platform for trades businesses. And um, it was like, I was like, Oh tech, everybody, everything you see on social media now is like, you should get into tech sales. 
And I was like, and this was after I was already working. I was like, wait, am I in tech sales? Is that what this is? You are. Um, and it's and it's great. It's a really, really, really great company. Um, you know, the one thing I, I think that people forget about tech sales is the benefits are are worth it. Um, so it's really good. Um, and I mean, you know, I'm calling businesses and usually they're telling me to, to F off. But right. but uh, every once in a while you, you talk to you talk to a nice guy and um, and you yeah, but you just kind of like build relationships. So let me let me ask you this. How has acting played a factor in, in, in your sales? Training? Whoa, it's uh, it, it's been a big, a big, uh, I think, a step up for me mm-hmm. um, in the sense of you. I'm, I'm, as you know, and you know, as you know, too, um, you a lot of times with when we're talking to these people, you kind of gotta be on your feet. So it is a little, um, it's a little improv, it's a little jazz. Obviously, you're following a script, but you, you kind of take the script and you adapt it to how you know you would, I guess, how you would say you embody a character, um, and it just helps. Like I just have it, it's e- when you know one how you sound when you're talking to people, mm-hmm. and you just have a lot of self awareness, which is what a lot. I I find a lot of, at least my peers that I work with don't have that. And a lot of them are new and, you know, they've never listened to themselves talk. And I'm like, I've cringed at myself since I was 15, listened to myself on tape. Right. Um, so it's like, I know what I sound like. I know, you know, and how, how to talk to people. And it gives you, so it gives you like the, the people skills, the soft skills that people say that acting um, and being an actor, a performer gives you yeah. is it, it gives you such a leg up. Um, now it can, uh, there's a friend of mine, who I work with, uh, we're on the same team and he's a comedian. Uh, he's based in San Francisco and you know, we say the same thing. We're like, well, is, is working, you know, is working a, a corporate job and working for the man? Is it making us less artists or less funny? Um, and he thinks it is making them less funny, but, um, <laughs> but I just think I was like, well, you know, you're just flexing a different, you know, you're flexing a different kind of muscle. And sometimes you get to have fun with it. Like, um, I have called people that have maybe ghosted me or, or, um, cussed me out on the phone and I just use a different Do accent. They cuss you out? On yeah, the oh phone? yeah. I was going to oh, ask yeah. you about the accent thing. Cause like I've, I've, I've done a lot of sales in my life too. And what I always found, like as I got deeper into like the day where I'm calling on folks, if you get into a conversation with somebody who's like super Southern, mm-hmm. you like yeah, you, and you, you kind of start going veering southern like, yeah, yeah. Man, well, I'll tell you what, we're going to talk about that in just a minute. I want to ask you about your, what are you guys doing for your marketing right now? Like, yeah. I, I, I have found myself doing that. Really? Yeah, like if I'm talking do you to do somebody that voice? and I hear that accent. The, what, what the, that, uh, that voice? Like, hey, so, can I talk to you about service patent? <laughs> no, I don't, I don't do that. <laughs> but, I, but yeah, I, I find myself kind of, or if they're northern, like I might start to, I don't know. I just, I find myself doing that and it kind of, I find that it kind of ingratiates yourself to the person you're huh. talking to because they yeah. feel like, oh, I'm talking to a person. The mirroring. Yeah. Yeah. There's the mirroring. That's yeah. the word. It really, yeah. it, I mean, it really, it, it helps too because I mean, the, also I'll say this, the, um, the business that we're calling, they're, you know, a lot of them, they're salt of the earth folks. They're proud. Like um, electricians and plumbers. And yeah. Electricians, plumbers. Hangers. And like, you know, yeah. you're usually talking to an owner who's also going out into the field because he likes it. Mm. Um, now that's not all the time and some shops are larger that we're talking to, but, um, you know, and they, a lot of them don't have time, but, um, like I, I, I have to call some people up in the Philly area, Boston, New York, and they don't mince words. Um, and, and it gives you like, it, it, it's shocking at first. And then when you're like, Oh, well, I just know if you know, okay, well they're, they're not going to want to listen to me ramble and rabble and use big words or, you know, he's like, uh, you know, people get to the point, get to the point. Um, so I, I just learned how to talk to them. And so I um, feel like, okay, if I see them calling somebody in Florida, it's a little bit of a different um, feel. Uh, yeah. Right. So they're, you know, you, I'm talking to usually the owner's wife who are wants you, to t- talk to me all day. So are you calling these people cold? Uh, some are cold, some are warm. It just, um, it just depends. But uh, I'm in Florida. They're warm. <laughs> um, <laughs> all, so, all year round. They're warm. <laughs> 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 I knew you. I knew oh, it, but you were pressing. You um, hear it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's been. Um, it was a sad trombone. Know, <laughs> uh, but yeah, it, 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 I think back to back to your question. It, it being an actor and having having training in acting, it it just helps. It's kind of it always like playing a character almost. Like yeah, not and not playing um, not playing you know Danny DeVito as a car salesman character, but um, just like okay, I'm embodying whatever this is. I'm coming as a clean slate. Each call is like a clean slate. I, think, I also think being an actor in live theater makes a, is, is it, you know, it's obviously super different than being on film. Mm. 
I think in sales, that live experience is with the ability yeah, you get to direct cover, feedback. Well, the ability to cover too. Like <laughs> yeah. Somebody asks you a question that you don't know the answer to, you can kind of shimmy around. You yeah. can bullshit your way through it effectively because you know how to cover. Yeah. Um. That that's a muscle that you just get trained through live field that works well in, in sales. I think. Hundred <clears throat> percent. The one the one thing that I will say the one thing that it it creates a uh like friction is when i know somebody's bullshitting me on the phone and a lot of time again new reps so they'll they take everybody with what they say um and i'm like i'm like hey i don't uh, listen we're both bullshitters okay so just shoot it to me straight why don't we just shoot it to you? like i had a lady called yesterday and i talked to i talked to her before and asked her for i guess whoever the owner was and she was like yeah hold on one second they're they're in and then i put sorry. on hold and I was like, uh, about two minutes. Yeah, and I was about to hang up. She came back. And, and uh, she was like, oh, you know what? They actually just stepped out. And I don't know when they're going to be back. Meanwhile, in the background, I can hear, they're trying to sell me something, <laughs> some sort of platform. <laughs> and I was like, tell her that I'm not trying to sell her anything, but I'll, I'll try and reach her another day. And she was like, uh, uh. And I was like, thank you. Goodbye. <laughs> yeah. So where most people would be like, you know, I I have some people on the that I've, I'm helping, like, you know, we, we, the, some of the more tenure reps will help train the new reps, but, and they'll be like, well, they told me this. I'm like, you can't believe what they're, what they're telling you. They're, they're, they're going to tell you whatever they can to get you to, to get off the phone. So yep. just find a way to, to be a real person with them and have a conversation while also, you know, you got to bullshit them a little bit. Just, to, you got to find your way to get to the end. Once you can hook them, then, you know, then they're like, oh, this is a regular person not trying to, Call me about my car's extended warranty. <laughs> so. Dude, it's so funny that those memes have been rolling around. <laughs> like, hey, I'm trying to reach you about the yeah. warranty. Um, so let me ask you this. How, how does the, the company currently market themselves? Um, I mean, they spend they spend a lot of money on on marketing. Um, they're, main, they're based in Glendale. So their main, you know, they've got billboards all on the 405. Like, I mean, all up and down the 405. They do. They do have a lot of um, of marketing that they do to like on YouTube, YouTube ads and stuff like that. For you know, obviously the whatever the out whatever their ICP is for the people that are there. So a lot of the the businesses will call will know already of Service Titan because they're like I see your billboards or mm. yeah I see your videos all the time. Um, is Service Titan like Angie's list for? Um, no, not really. Angie's list is more of like a. Um, it's like a routing service, um, like a middleman between a customer and a, and a shop. Um, right. I've got, I think my, my, my property manager that owns my townhouse uses Thumbtack, which is the same thing where they just skim off the top. Right. Or uh, you pay a fee. No, it's a, it's a, it's a platform for the, for the businesses to run, essentially run their business um, digitally. So, um, a lot of there are other platforms out like there. Project but management. Yeah, it's project management, dispatching. CRM. There's yeah, CRM. There's phone calls, and then there is a section for service site that does help with marketing as well. Um, will help them, um, you know, re- see what campaigns are doing well. It kind of gives them a little bit of marketing cool. insights. Um, it's obviously an added on. Uh, you know, it's one of these like it's so like kind of like HubSpot, in a sense. Yeah, yeah, but it also like there's they have reporting. They, their main thing I think is, which is a big seller is, is how, um, you get such a granular insight into the business. A lot of owners that have been either in business for 45 years are still on pen and paper. So they're digging through papers, you know, they're just hoping and crossing their fingers at the end of the month that the QuickBooks or whatever their account or their accountant says, oh yeah, it seems like we're doing well, but they have no insight into what really is happening with their guys out in the field. And, you know, you don't want to build distrust with. You find it hard to get through to those guys who are, you know, like a guy who's had a, he's been an electrician for 40 years and he's got a team now and, but he's still operating on pen and paper. Is it hard to, for that, to break that barrier and convince them? Yeah. It's harder to sell to. I think that's, that's (coughs) harder to sell to than somebody who's already on something that's a competitor that we can just be like, yeah, we do, but we're a lot better. I know we're more expensive, but we're, come on, come on. Right. Um, But uh, the ones that have been doing it, they're like, well, we've been doing it for, you know, we've been doing it this way for 60 plus years or, um, and they're, again, it's a, it's a, it's a pride thing. They're so proud of, and they should be, you know, you they, know they have a successful, break, yeah. My paper don't break. Exactly. <laughs> um, and, and so it, it, that I think is more difficult, but actually I have more fun with those conversations because it's about, uh, it's about education. talking to them. Yeah. Education and talking to them about like, well, where do you spend your time all, 
all day long. Like I, I, I know you'd rather, I know you don't, don't want to be out. I know like what you were saying uh, before where you're like, I'm too old to be lugging around stuff. I was like, I know you're too old to get up in these attics and be, re- and be installing a new unit. So where would you rather spend your time? Wouldn't you rather, isn't it, you know, I don't want to like push them into retirement, but I'm like, well, what happens in 10 years when you're ready to retire? What happens to the business? Do you want it to be profitable? Right. Um, are you handing it down to a, to a son, to a family member? Um, and then it's like, it almost like clicks for him where they're like, oh, well, you're, you're not trying to tell me that the way I'm doing it is wrong. You're just showing me that there's a better uh, there's way, a better way yeah. that could, that's easier. So that's, that, that's at least how I approach it. Um, which again, it's like a consultative approach, which I, I think adds to, it adds to how I also, when I'm, when I'm, um, in like when I'm directing actors, it's like the same thing. I'm not going to tell you what to do. I'll help you get there. Um, and show you that if there is a better way, then, um, you know, why don't we try it this way? Let's see what that looks like. Yeah. Not, you have to do it this way. Trust me. You, but, um, you tell your actors what I, when I direct, I tell my actors, I'll tell them, you can give me any suggestion you want, <clears throat> but you have to understand that I have the right to say no. Yeah. I will let you tell, you can ask for anything you want. You can make a suggestion, but you can't get offended if I tell you. Yeah. I mean, I, I listen. But I'm yeah. I'm collaborative. I'm I I'm definitely like, collaborative. That's a terrible idea. We're not going to do that. <laughs> right. 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 <laughs> I mean, I, I'll usually I usually say that if I if we if it's my idea and we try something, I'm like, mm. yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. I'm like, well, that was a bad idea on my part. So uh, let's try something different. Um, I like that. I like that consultative approach you talked about. That's a lot of what what we do. Yeah. With yeah. Our clients. It's, it's we try to kind of consult into the sale. Um, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Let me ask you this. How, how has marketing and sales been working together? Like, cause I know you got the marketing department and you got the sales department. Mm-hmm. Are y'all in communication or, you know, cause obviously the marketing has to help the sales. Yeah. Right. So yeah. how does that work with, with your, your company? Do you know? So we're, we are under the, um, we're all under the same umbrella, um, mm-hmm. in terms of like, we're on the, the revenue side or the revenue part of the organization. We, in terms of the the outbound sales to the to the marketing, we we don't necessarily talk at least at my level um, talk directly to them, but we will have meetings uh, where they'll talk about hey we're you know we're we're running this is a campaign we're running uh, whether there's promotionals and then they'll kind of talk through like logistics for that. Um, I worked uh, I worked previously for a company that that would. Um, sell video cameras into into truck for trucks and tr- like logistics companies like mm-hmm. you know semis and, and amazon stuff like that and constantly it was we're running this you know we would have meetings we're running this campaign uh for this whatever the event was um and here's how we're here's how we're approaching it attack these so we would like there would be times where we come together and we kind of game plan and then we just go off on our own um but on a day-to-day perspective no i mean we the CMO is our is our boss, um, at least as far as I know right now. That could by today that could change because <laughs> it is um, it is still a Silicon Valley startup. But um, but he you know so we would we would see him every day. But he's more of just you know kind of hoorah leadership as opposed to getting granular on Got it. on what's kind of going on with the with the marketing stuff. Let me ask you this: Do you guys ever have ideas where you're all like, man, it would be so much easier in for our job if like marketing would do this? Do you guys do you guys ever run into things like that? Um, I haven't run into that currently at at Service Titan, mm-hmm. um, and I think mainly just because it's such a large company. But the um, the smaller companies I worked for, absolutely. Um, and by smaller, I mean they're just literally their head count was much smaller. Right. Um, it because there was mu- a much more um, direct effect on what marketing is doing in terms of how they're messaging. Um, I found that that has caused the biggest disconnect between marketing and sales is when you, when you get kind of, when you get really experienced sales guys, they don't want to be told, well, the messaging is this, they want to, they want to embody and figure out, but they, they still all have their kind of way that they go about doing it. That works for them. Um, now is that the, the best way? I don't know. Um, some people say it is because they make $500,000 a year. Uh, and some people are just proud to do it that way. And they think their way is the only way. Right. On the other hand of that, you have the, the people that are running the campaigns, um, 
on the marketing side who maybe have a good idea of the ICP, but aren't talking to these businesses every day, aren't talking to, well, we have to update what these pain points are. These aren't issues for, you know, these aren't issues for these folks anymore. Um, our biggest thing right now that we are constantly updating is, um, is our competitive Intel as well, because we have direct messaging, how we kind of attack our, if we're, if we're calling on shops that are using competitor softwares or platforms. And I hate getting cut, caught flat footed when I'm told, Oh, well, no, that doesn't, that doesn't work. That's not a problem for us. They fix that. Or they know they do that as well. And you're like, <sighs> okay. <laughs> Okay, and then again, like you said, you just kind of have to like you know you you have to pivot a little bit into um into more of a a more esoteric pain as opposed to a direct like you know uh, they I know their reporting and their QuickBooks integration was pretty rough. Oh uh, no, actually their QuickBooks integration is pretty great. Oh, okay, that's not what I heard. Yeah, that's not what I heard. <laughs> so so it's the con it's the constant like the update for that. Um, I will say the uh, where I have seen where I have, I have put in for um, kind of, hey, here's an idea, is some of our, our email messaging, our mm. email marketing that we do, that, that again, the sales, you know, the sales guys are sending out each day. Uh, it's too long-winded. Yeah. Um, it's too much. Um, I'm a big fan of, uh, of the guys at Lavender. Um, I don't know if, if you've heard of them or anything, but they, um, they basically have created a, a, a platform that, grades how well your um, your emails are based on kind of That's cool. whatever their machine learning AI is for their for their platform and people like don't what's opening what's not yeah opening. and what and also just like hey it, they score you based on uh, how well the the how well you we're pretty sure that this is gonna do you get like an a you know like a grade score that's cool and so the biggest so it thing audits. yeah it yeah it's essentially what it is and the biggest thing is uh People don't, people don't want to see all, you don't need to give them everything. Hell no. Have a conversation. Let it be like almost like it's a text message because people don't look at, especially our, our um, ICP, people aren't looking at email <coughs> on, their, on their computers anymore. They look at it on their phone. So it, you treat it like it's a text, like it's a conversation. They're going to respond. Right. Um, but you, you give them all this information and you put all these paragraphs and you put, yeah, they're going to get halfway down and then they're going to, they're, I mean, I'm, I do that even when I offer totally. newsletters that I've signed up for. Yeah, totally. I, don't, I, I don't even read. I don't even read them all the Our time. So pretty short. Yeah. Um, stuff we're sending out. It's pretty short yeah. stuff. So, but our, that's been a, I, I'll say that's probably one thing that I would say that needs to, needs to change on the messaging aspect for. And again, I don't, I don't know how much of that really is more marketing as opposed to like op sales or rev ops. So mm. when, um, you're, when you're sending out the emails, they're pre-written for you guys. Some of them are. We have templates. I'm always changing. Are you? I'm, are you sending them out individually, or do you guys have like a mass mailer? That does I mean, that we thing? use we use Sales Loft for our like communication day to day, um, but so you can schedule them. But you, I mean, I still have to. I still the other thing is tailoring them to to, to the business. Like right. The pains that are that uh, an electric uh, you know electrician company is dealing with is not the same thing as a plumbing company. Right. <coughs> um, so you're hitting the pain points in those emails. Yeah. And, or, you know, just That's like cool. just relevant info and, you know, there's not, maybe not enough, there maybe aren't enough templates in there and I'll search for a template real quick. And if I can't find anything, I'll just, you know, do a one-off on my own. Um, it takes up time, but I've gotten. And I've that's gotten. what your follow-up is, is our, our emails. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you do any follow-up like phone calls? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm calling, I'm doing probably s 60 to 70 calls a day. Um, that's on a day that I'm not really connected to anybody. I, I can also do as many as 20 just because. You have a long conversation. Yeah, I, I, I get, I get um, Ethel who's answering the phones and she wants to. I mean, I, there was, a, there was a, a lady that's up in Rhode Island and she told me about her. There is a guy next door to them. He got murdered. And then <laughs> my cousin is pregnant. And I was like, but are you guys currently using a field <laughs> management platform? She's like, you're like, but. Henry, somebody and, and called us. Yeah. <laughs> Layla. <laughs> we get to talk to a human. Don't make me get the hogs. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so it's so you know it, again, and I don't want to. You know, I'm like, oh, geez, I don't want to like push slate off the phone, and then she's like, she goes home and like slits her wrist or something. So yeah, yeah. So um, you know, I I talked to her for a little bit, and then at the end of it, obviously, she's like, no, Connie wouldn't be into that, and I'm like, God. Like, this is a great use of I'm my like, time. Okay. I appreciate it. Thank you. I'm, I'm almost an hour. <laughs> right. like, I'll, I'll send you a I'm charge. Like I talked to you, I talk to you through my lunch. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> you owe me oh, a gift card. Man. That's amazing. 
Um, so I'm a uh, last question because we got to get out of here. But because um, you you produce plays, mm-hmm. how are you marketing that? How are you marketing? You know, and and what have you seen out there in terms of like really good marketing um, ideas for for theaters? So I I think the the boilerplate stuff that a lot of people do is you know putting it out on social media mm-hmm. um and you know hey we'll we'll put we post a poster the the show poster and and that's it and and that yeah that may have been what worked in 2006 facebook but um it's it is more of i think the aggressive uh marketing tactics that have made that are working for for theaters especially if it's an on un, more of an unknown play like i'll give you an example um uh, they did Actors Express in Atlanta is doing or maybe is currently doing Lizzie, which is a Lizzie Borden yeah, I think it actually just musical. Yeah. And uh, mm-hmm. they 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 created they had like a, a videographer come in and they created a really, really nice promo, almost like it was um, like a trailer mm-hmm. for a horror film. And That's then on cool. top of it, there were and I mean, I haven't gone to to a show there in in quite a few years. And on top of it, they're sending out direct mailers and it's just it's just a, a postcard with the with the cover and then the info on the back yep. and then like a you know a little cta or a little um little hook and it's a call to action yeah yeah and they do and they do uh they do a lot of interview stuff too like yeah. interviewing the director interviewing the cast about their ex- during the rehearsal process so yeah so like it's that kind of marketing works really well with theater but you have to be you have to be out in front though. yeah like you can't if you're Doing your videography for you're you're shooting a video two weeks before it opens. Right. Yeah. It well and the the issue (coughs) that I've seen at least for because a lot of the the, like for me you know producing and and I I have a a colleague that I we write and we you know produce these plays with, um and these performances and it we do our best to to do our own marketing while we're also doing everything else that involves with the with the show. Um, and oftentimes a venue will say, well, we'll handle the marketing, but then the venue will want to take a, you know, they'll want to take a cut from the, from the, um, proceeds, but their, their marketing is, is terrible. Is terrible. And the, and you don't get, you know, you're like, like Will said, you're not getting anything for uh, a week before opening. So that's not going to help drive si- ticket sales. And it's just lazy. I've noticed like late and I don't want to call it necessarily, I, I'll take that back. I want to call it lazy because I think a lot of, um, theaters are they don't have right the right marketing people in place right to run the marketing they don't or have budget or they don't have the budget yeah but you can get creative with a small budget if you if you if it's a focus and i don't think that there's an i think people are like oh well our audience knows us it's like yeah but what about the people that don't know you right that's that's what's important to me is don't you want everyone to if it's a good show and you yeah you got to keep it, you got to keep promoting got to keep marketing yeah gotta I mean it's constant it you're constantly having to promote and network um and I mean sometimes like personally sometimes it just it's it's so draining like um, energy wise oh, it's man. just draining but you I mean you have to do it to you have to play that game a little bit to do gotta. it to just keep keep yourself rel- you know you're like I want to be top try to of make mind. it fun yeah exactly. try to make it fun you exactly. know I think gamify it a little bit and that's the thing too is like you know what I tell my clients when they're marketing I'm like if, if this is not a fun experience for you in the shooting process then the output's not going to be gonna fun come right in the shooting. Yeah. You know, yeah nobody's going to want to nobody's going to want to yeah. watch that but if you're having a good time yeah if you know if everything through the process has been fun then you know the output is probably going to be fun it's yeah. going to be more engaging for people to watch yeah yeah, yeah. and then you're going to want to be like man i can't wait for people to see this right yeah. it's like you or know treat it that again. marketing that way treat treat the marketing as if it's the show yeah yeah you know what i mean exactly as, as much as as much as as the show is like that's got to be the component i think a lot of people kind of forget about and that it should aspect. be it should the thing is is it should be fun yeah. the, when when you get down to it it is fun um, but I think people get bogged down sometimes on on the terms, uh, the marketing terms yeah. in the industry and the um, the data, and which is great. You need that stuff to see what's performing. But it, at the at the at its core, like it's it should be fun. Like yeah. You, if if you like it, you should. You know, it's just getting the word out there and getting people to want yeah. to want something. Um, and it, when you can see the kind of the fruits of your labor for that, it's it's really awesome. Yeah, man. Zach, tell them where they can find you right here. So uh, you can find me on Instagram. It's Zach W. Phelps. Um, and then that's the same thing for my TikTok. Um, and then I've got a website, which is also ZachWPhelps.com. Um, and I've got another one that's coming out um, called the, uh, I'm starting a, a like a, a stylist business. Um, cool. It's kind of uh, cool. kind of the next, that. yeah, it's kind of like the next thing. 
um, for me in the uh, multi hyphenate sphere, if you will. <laughs> um, but Multiple that, streams of but, income. But that will um, that's called a, a fitted man, and it'll be uh, should be live in I think a couple of months. Oh, I'm gonna hit you up. That's so awesome. Yeah, because yeah. Will needs it. All right. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you guys so much for watching Spaghetti on the Wall. It has been brought to you by Leduc Entertainment for all of your marketing and digital marketing needs, social media, uh, videography, writing, distribution, everything that you need in terms of marketing. Thank you guys so much. Zach, y'all check him out. Um, and uh, we'll see y'all next time. <laughs>